got another exciting match for you today in the singles division, continuing on with uh, our massive uh, singles picture here for the next title picture. And uh, we have two players going at it today for the opportunity to get into a number one contenders match. We got uh, Robert Kastner going up against Jordan Owens. And joining me on the desk today, I'm Dylan, by the way. Hi. Uh, joining me on the desk today is uh, is uh, one Andrew James Barr. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm very tired, but I'm good because I'm excited for this match. Uh, Robert Kastner is a player that I think everyone knew was better than his record had shown before the year started. And he's really shown that this year. Uh, he's went on a great run um, until he unfortunately just like hit one player that just got the upper hand that day. Um, then we have Jordan Owens, who is a very quiet three and one. Like he's a player that I don't think people are talking enough about, considering the people that he's beaten. So I think that this is going to be a Super interesting match with two players that are on a hot streak this year. Yeah, absolutely. So let's just jump right into the pre-match interviews and talk to said players, starting with uh, our lower-ranked competitor, Jordan Owens. Uh, Jordan, you are fresh off of victory against, I believe, Antonio Chavez. Now you're going up against uh, his faction mate, uh, Robert Kastner. Uh, thoughts on your opponent today? Uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've had a decent run a little bit so far. It's all been kind of, um, I'd say, I'll, I'll even admit a little bit uphill battles, but I've been able to squeak it out, and Robert's another tremendous competitor, just like Ant-Man. I love Antonio. So I'm very much looking forward to this. Let's see uh, let's see how it goes. I got my manager here, so we're ready. Nice. All right. Well, good luck to you, sir. We will now bring in your opponent Ooh, for this Robert. evening. Son of a bitch. We will now bring in your opponent for this evening, Mr. Robert Kastner, and his manager, Jake Meltzer. Uh, Robert, you're back off a win, fresh off a win against Jacob Cameron, uh, another rookie this season. Now you're going up against another rookie in uh, Jordan Owens. Thoughts on your opponent today? We're back in melee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Um, now, uh, rookies, that's uh, that's what we're doing this year. Uh, beat some rookies, lost to some rookies. Um, you know, you got to you gotta take their licks. Uh, and I prefer to be the person that gives it to them. But if, I, if it comes back to me, ricochets. That's fine, too. We're good. I didn't know this was for contender, Matt. That's crazy to me. I, I just like, what the fuck? Where are we? What universe yeah. is this? That's a, that was a shock to me, too. Um, yeah, beating one member of Fun DMC, it happens. Beating two, that's a coincidence. Robert, let's not make this a trend. Take care of business. Three, three is my favorite number, but just throw it out there. All right. Well, best of luck to you as well. We will now put your manager backstage and we will get into round number one, which will work like this. Each player will be asked eight questions in eight different categories of movie trivia. If they get all eight questions right, they will be asked a bonus question. Each question will be answered individually on their whiteboards in 15 seconds. Uh, three repeats and one challenge for each player they will be able to use for the entirety of the match. Uh, any questions before we get started? Uh, Jordan, if you win, I don't have it on me, but can I can I give you the DMC scepter through the mail? Because he would, yeah, yeah, I'll send him my Addy. Yeah, okay. all right. Then we will get it's started with we will get started with the first question, round number one, which comes in everyone's favorite category of Oscars. What was the most recent film to win best adapted screenplay? So, uh, you want to know what Oscar I've won? Which one? Sickest Ride. Nice, nice. Does Pimp My Ride count as the Oscars? Five, <laughs> four, three, to some people. two, one. Repeat. All right, that is the first repeat for Robert. Thank you. Your question again. <laughs> what was the most recent film to win Best Adapted Screenplay? That makes me oh. wonder, has Pimp My Ride ever like won any Emmys, do you think? Oh, Not sure. enough. For Dopest Host? Dopest Did you know there's like an RV version Five, of it that's coming out now? Four, and I was like, Come three. On. That's that makes two, sense. That's a new trend. One. Hands down, we will start with Robert. She said. And uh, Jordan, I, sorry. I didn't have it. Did not have it. Uh, both incorrect. We were looking for women talking. That's what it is. Okay. The other one. Okay. Yep, the other one. The yeah. other cheese. Yeah. Uh, your next question is going to come in the category of Westerns. 1976's The Shootist is predominantly set in what western U.S. state? Back to the old reliable well of in the state. Oh, yes. My favorite question is Shoot. Canadian. 
I didn't realize till now that she said and women talking do have kind of similar titles, but yeah. Really? Uh, for she said women talking for E. Two. I thought that was one. One. Movie. Pens down, and we will go to Jordan first. No, I said Tejas. And uh, Robert. I also said Tejas. Uh, both incorrect. We were looking for Nevada. Oh, okay. Nevada. I don't know. Nevada. Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> Next question comes in the category of romance. Humbert Humbert is the lead character in what 1962 and 1997 film? Nevada, 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 Nevada. I guess Where are you we'll going just, with this? Let's call the whole thing off. Okay. <laughs> Fair. Five. That's a musical reference Four. for all my musical nerds Three. out there. I'll, I'll take Two. a repeat, please. All right, that is Jordan's first repeat. Humbert Humbert is the lead character in what 1962 and 1997 film? Uh, yeah, I believe that is a uh, any get your gun reference for all you mm. non musical nerds out there. Uh, oh, like me? Yeah. Five, four. And I'm probably three, wrong to be two, honest. one. Pens down. We'll go to Robert. I said rocks. I don't know. These are good questions. And Jordan? I didn't have it. <laughs> uh, both incorrect. We were looking for Lolita. Uh, okay. Yeah. Your next question is going to come in action adventure. The final confrontation in Face Off starts in what kind of building? I want to talk so much about this because of all the tropes that ah, this yes. particular director uses. <laughs> wow, the hints. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Jordan. The airport and Robert Church. Church is correct. Yeah, I can see, I can see that. So Robert takes the first lead. As we get into your next question, which will come in the category of directors, name two films directed by James Gray. Yes, yeah, so, I love uh, when we sneak a demand in our list of questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> It's like when a dance song tells you to dance, but it's exactly. Yeah, it's not asking you to dance. <laughs> Shut up and dance with me. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to uh, Robert. So the invitation, I don't have another one. And uh, Jordan? I didn't even finish my first one. I didn't have it. Uh, both incorrect. We were, the options we were we would have accepted are Ad Astra, The Lost City of Z, Armageddon Time, The Immigrant, We Own the Night, The Yards, and Two Lovers. Okay. Your next question is going to come in classics. C.R. McNamara works at what beverage company in 1961's One Two Three? I haven't seen this film. It's very good. Um, I don't love it as much as everyone else, Five, but it's still solid. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Jordan first. Pepsi. And Robert? I said Coca Cola. Coin flip pays off for one of their favorite. It's uh, Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> So Robert extends the lead uh, to nothing as we get into your next question in the category of 80s. Michael Douglas, Kathleen Turner, and Danny DeVito star in what 1989 film? Ooh, something popped up on my screen. Oh, no. Yeah. Something a virus like a... live on call. <laughs> Five. Four. Bless you. Three. I'm disappointed in myself for that one, Blood. honestly. That's, That's fine. Lot. Pens down. We'll go to Robert first. Jewel of the Nile. And Jordan? War of the Roses. War of the Roses is correct. So Jordan cuts into the lead two to one. So getting your final question, Mark. It's going to come in comedy. In what 70s comedy will you hear the song Always Look on the Bright Side of Life? 
really hard for me to not sing this one. It is, but it's another one of those uh, demanding situations. Yes. Always look on the bright side of life. Exactly. For something that sounds like it should be so cheerful. Five, four. It's weird that this is a heavy three, metal song. Two, one. Hands down. Uh, we'll go to Jordan first. To the jerk. And Robert? Sit up and smoke. Uh, both incorrect. We were looking for Life of Brian, Monty Python's Life oh of Brian. Oh my god, that's right. <laughs> All right. So after that, I have the score at two to one in Robert's favor. Is that what you have? That's what I have. All right. Then we'll get into round number two, which will work like this. It is the wheel round. So each competitor will get the chance to spin the wheel, which will decide what category they'll be answering questions in. Each question worth two points, five questions. If they check down a multiple choice, it will be worth one point instead. Stealing is available. Your categories on the wheel today are Alicia Vikander, 2000s comedies, music, sports, comic book movies, Actors and actresses, musicals, and horror, as well as spinners and opponents' choice. So we'll now bring in uh, Robert's manager since they are in the lead, and they can decide whether they'd like to spin first or defer. What a rough round. Um, that was, uh, <laughs> my assumption is that yeah, rough in that I couldn't even get in the quest, the challenge in time because Danny DeVito is also in Jewel of the Nile. But anyway, yeah, moving on. Uh, from is there. the same year though? Was there a year? Yeah, there anyway. was. Yeah. Anyway, okay. never... um, I think, I think this isn't should... a terrible wheel. No. Um, do you kind of want to just like power through and go first? And uh, get, like, I kind of wanted to sit stuff? back and revel in my a little bit? crappiness. Okay. And we will go second. Yeah, second, please. All right, then we'll put Jake backstage for now. And Jordan, this will be your first spin. I'm going to lead dopely. And in the category of sports. <laughs> sports. And again. Oh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll spin that and see what we do. All right. So then the category of musicals. Uh, we'll go back to sports. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Bar, you like musicals. Would you like to? Yeah, you have to give him his questions. Do it. That's and right. Sing them. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, if the time comes. Uh, your first question, Jordan, in musicals. Why does Tex Richmond want to destroy the Muppet Theater in 2011's The Muppets? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice stops are for the insurance, A, for the insurance money, B, to drill for oil, C, to open a McDonald's there, or D, he hates the Muppets. Hates the Muppets, D? That is incorrect. Chance for the one point seal, Robert. Your options again are A, for the insurance money, B, to drill for oil, C, to open a McDonald's there, or D, he hates the Muppets. I think it's to drill for oil. And that is correct for one point. Question number two in this category is How long after Greece is Greece 2 set? Five years. That is incorrect. Chance for the two point steal. Two years? That is correct for two ah, points. I was trying to make sure you can get multiple. Damn. Big Grease 2 fan, Robert is. I kind of like Your, Grease 2. <laughs> Your next question What is the name of the musical that Christian is writing in Moulin Rouge? Oh, multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Spectacular, Spectacular, B, Wonderful, Wonderful, C, Fantastic, Fantastic, or D, Amazing, Amazing. Oh, well, I feel like I've done this too somewhere at some point. Uh, spectacular, first one. A. That's correct for two points. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shout out to the writer of that question. You made me kind of chuckle. Uh, your next question, your penultimate question, who stars as Sky Masterson in Guys and Dolls? Uh, multiple choice, please. Your multiple choice options are A, Marlon Brando, B, Frank Sinatra, C, James Stewart, or D, Dean Martin. 
Did I hear the multiple choice again? All right. Your options are A, Marlon Brando, B, Frank Sinatra, C, James Stewart, or D, Dean Martin. Sinatra. That is incorrect. Robert, chance for the one-point steal. Your options are A, Marlon Brando, B, Frank Sinatra, C, James Stewart, or D, Dean Martin. I'll say Marlon Brando. And that is correct for one point. Damn. Hearing Marlon Brando sing Luck Be a Lady is one of the weirdest things ever. Uh, your final question, Jordan, in this category of musicals. Who owns the New York world in Newsies? Multiple choice, please. Your multiple choice options are A, William Randolph Hearst, B, Harry Coke. C, George Jones, or D, Joseph Pulitzer? D. That is correct for one point. All right, so coming out of Jordan's spin there, I have the score now at six to three for Robert. So we will now bring back uh, Jake and as well as the wheel, and this will be Robert's first spin. Land on the category of music. Would you like to keep that or spin again? I think we. Um, I think I'd like to spin again because I like most of the rest of the wheel, and I think we can get a chance to put like some distance here. And I don't think I can do it with music necessarily. So, yeah, um, spin we'll spin again. All right. So then, the category that you'll stuff with is spinner's choice. Probably comic book, right? I kind of yeah. wanted. I kind of wanted to flex the Elisa Vikander, but I'm not. Do like, it. Yeah, maybe maybe save that. Yeah, we can save go, that. Go with your bread and butter. All right. Go yeah, we'll go. We'll go comic book movies. All right. So then I will be reading you your. Oh, once I take Jake off screen. There we go. All right. So then I will be reading you your questions, Robert, in the category of comic book movies. Your first question is. Once I can find it, there they are. All right. What is the name of Breathless Mahoney's accompanist played by Mandy Patinkin in Dick Tracy? I'm pretty sure I know it, but I'm going to multiple, please. All right. Your options are A, Mumbles, B, Stooge, C, 88 Keys, or D, Kid. 88 Keys. That is correct for one point. Your next question. What is the sorry, what is the acronym of the invention that Tony Stark names that was designed by Quentin Beck in Captain America Civil War? Barf. That is correct for two points. Or binarily augmented retro framing, if you want to be a nerd. Nerd. Sure. Uh, your next question. <laughs> Who directed the spirit? Uh, Five, four. Frank Miller. Three. That is correct for two points. Your penultimate question. How many times has Tom Hardy played Venom? Well, he did two Venoms and No Way Home, so I will say three. That is correct for two more points. For now, here's the situation. If Robert gets this next question right for any point value, he will win by way of knockout. So your final question in this category, Robert. In what DC film will you find a villainous invention called The Box? Batman Forever. And your winner, by way of knockout, Robert Kastner. Uh, Batman Forever was the correct answer. So we will uh, put Robert backstage for now, and we will get into our post-match interviews, starting with our unfortunate second-place finisher today, 
Uh, Jordan, uh, look, it was some really rough questions in round number one. I'd say so <laughs> as you, when you get closer, obviously, to the, the the title and like the number one contenders match, they get quite difficult. Oh, and fair enough, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, rough spin in musicals, so it happens. Just luck wasn't on your side today. Thoughts on your performance overall? Uh, no, I mean, you know, like I said, at least we were even <laughs> in, in that first round pretty much. So I'll, t- I'll take that as, as as my kind of side win here. Uh, no, but like I said, Robert was a great competitor here. I mean, hey, I don't want to defeat the whole team. You know, I want them to, you know, no, it's not what I was playing. Uh, but no, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, like I said, it's that unfortunate round two of getting kind of one, definitely one of my weaker uh, categories and him getting spinner's choice. So also definitely helped secure that. But a lot of fun. Uh, looking forward to uh Possible redemption next time, but regardless, uh, thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem. You still have a great record uh, with three and two. Very, very good yeah. stuff. I think you definitely turned a lot that. of heads this season with uh, the competitors that you've beaten. Very high quality competitors. Uh, so we look forward to having you back. We'll put you backstage for now. Uh, and we'll bring in our first place finisher for this evening, uh, Robert Kastner and his manager, Jake Meltzer. Uh, Robert, yet another fantastic performance i mean rough uh, aside from round one which as we can we all saw it was a bit of a struggle for both competitors yes. but from there on you hit every single question that was that got asked to you from even, even including the steals so really impressive performance overall uh adding another knockout to your record uh thoughts on just how it went yeah i'm eight and five and i have six knockouts so I'm, i i consider myself like i know i'm gonna go into a contender match which is insane but I consider myself like a quad A player, if you know baseball. I don't think I'm like a top I, – I don't think I really belong in Melee necessarily, but I think I'm better than like a minor league person. So that's how I sort of uh, visualize myself. Yeah, round one was tough. I knew – obviously I knew the first question. I just didn't remember the right movie title. And then I was between War of the Roses and Jewel Denial. So I, I should have had like a four technically, uh, but I didn't because I didn't. Uh, the rest of the questions were hard as fuck in my mind, uh, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, I was very happy to get musicals. I think that really made the difference. Um, and this is the second match in a row where I got comic book movies. And the first question was uh, was not Bugsy. What's the other one? Dick Tracy. It was a Dick yeah. Tracy. So like maybe I should watch Dick Tracy. But I knew 88 Keys. I just wasn't entirely sure. Uh, so it's, this is fun. This was great. I was happy. Jake? Yeah, I mean, no, didn't know the stakes coming into this. Just figured that it was just going to be chill hang uh yeah. but yeah i mean rough round run for both of you but i think so i was really impressed with your ability to get the steals and the musicals like i think that sort of showed something that you hadn't to this point mm. it was like i mean everybody knows comic book movies is like you can do that in your sleep um but you still have to take advantage of it when you get spinner's choice and like you've done that uh multiple times and i think that you just know like the stuff you're good at you're really really good at and um like as somebody who's been your partner in the past like i know the commitment that you have when the stakes get higher so i'm really excited to see what comes next in this this new arena for you for sure yeah well, speaking of what comes next, uh, I can tell you from the pool of people that you will be playing, uh, full disclosure, the matches haven't been shot yet, but I can tell you the three people who you could be potentially be facing in your number one contenders match will either be Cameron Holtzman, Fuck. Will Cohen, or Scott Harvey. So out of those three people, uh, who would you be willing to face? Well, I, was, uh, I did knock out Scott, and I know from the match that aired – that where he played um uh where he played tim that he named me because he wants revenge uh so that'd be fun will would be great um i've only ever played will in teams uh so it'd be neat and be in a faction holtzman uh would probably not go particularly well for me unless the luck that i've had continues uh because he's just kind of an animal at this point uh but you know if it's him uh, i think it'll be fun uh he probably owes me for the thug and turbo riders match that they he was they were better at than, than we just won based on luck uh so either way uh those that's a great pool of people i'm very excited either way yeah obviously would love will because that means someone from the faction will be playing for a title no matter what so selfishly there that's kind of where i'm leaning but 
any of the three, Robert will be ready, no matter what. All right, sounds good. Well, we'll definitely look forward to it. We will put you backstage for now. And we will go over to Andrew Barr to close this thing out. Andrew, I think we had a good match today. What do you think? Uh, I think so, too. I think Jordan just unfortunately had a category that didn't go their way. Yeah. Uh, and we all have that match. Robert, however, he says that he doesn't really belong in Melee, and I highly disagree. I think Robert's got a broader knowledge of general films than he will be willing to admit. Um, so I think he's going to be tough to beat. Let's yeah, see what happens. Absolutely. It's been having a crazy year for him in Melee this year. Great comeback season. Love to see it. Anyways, thank you all for watching this. Uh, we will see you in the next one. Thank you to all the showrunners, writers, players, and managers that help make this league what it is. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Goodbye. Storm in the castle. Think it'll like? If we take a look. Bye.